Soggy bottoms, sour sauce, and tough crusts? Making pizza at home may seem like a good deal, but spending your dough on takeout might be more worth it. It's undeniable that a brick oven produces some of the smokiest, rustic, and most mouth-watering smells known to mankind. According to Inside Science, using a wood-fired brick oven is what's best for pizza. Restaurants use these ovens because the key to a well-rounded, savory tomato pie is for both the toppings and the dough on the bottom to finish cooking simultaneously. For this to happen, the temperature needs to reach about 625 degrees Fahrenheit, something most conventional ovens can't do. The hollow chamber of a brick oven allows for high heat to bake the top of the pizza while its bricks take on thermodynamic qualities, ensuring a thorough, even heating from one end of the crust to the other. Inside Science tells us that by exposing your pizza to such high heat, it only takes about two minutes to cook, and that's thanks to the consistent amount of heat being produced by the small fire in this type of oven. The overall quality of a pizza improves when cooked in a brick oven with crispier toppings and a perfectly charred crust. You may think that transferring your raw pizza to a baking sheet and popping the pan into an oven is enough to create a high-grade pizza, but that's far from the truth. First off, you'll need a pizza peel, which is a large, flat spatula with a long handle, to properly transfer your pie into the oven. Mama Cucina says that utilizing a wood or metal peel also helps pizza makers place their uncooked creation directly on a hot surface. Flour dusted on metal peels helps to avoid any sticky dough residue. This tool also helps ensure even heating by allowing you to rotate the pie as it cooks, something that cannot be done as easily in a conventional oven due to lack of space. Home cooks could buy their own peel with a shorter handle, which would be better than not having one at all. Some at-home chefs assemble a pizza directly on a peel so the fully loaded pizza can be shifted into an oven more carefully than without one. Ever see professional pizza makers ladle on a nice thin layer of red sauce on a soft, fluffy pizza dough and think it wasn't nearly enough to suffice? Well, there's a reason this method works and makes for a well-balanced bite of tomato pie. Too much sauce adds unnecessary weight to a pizza, and dough won't do well under its pressure. Stellar pizza makers know how to keep soggy crusts from happening. According to Pizza Planet, sauce should be spread so that there's just enough to mask the dough, making sure it doesn't outshine its toppings. The sauce will also cook along with the dough, so having a thinner layer will heat it through more effectively. Look, there you go, no tip sag. No tip sag. Yeah, cheers. It's worth mentioning that at home, your instincts might tell you to go ahead and use up that leftover pasta sauce for the pizza dinner you plan on making. While you might be tempted to use the two interchangeably, Websterant Store tells us they're different enough and should only be used for their respective purposes. Why? Pizza sauce is typically a little thicker in consistency than pasta sauce, hence the reason a thin layer does the trick for pizza, whereas with a thinner pasta sauce, you might desire a larger portion to fully coat your spaghetti. When it comes to cheese, one trick pizzerias do that you might be missing out on at home is pairing the right kinds together. According to Insider, topping a pizza with the appropriate cheese blend offers advantages over letting just one cheese perform solo. David Kay, a former restaurant cook who started operating a pizza business out of his home in New York City in 2020, told Insider he uses a blend of cheeses low on moisture. Topping a pizza with too much wet cheese will make for a damp pie, and who wants that? Kay also points out that using fresh cheese often creates excess liquid. The secret? Kay uses low-moisture mozzarella, along with a small batch of fresh mozzarella mixed in with a couple of hard cheeses he gets shipped in from Wisconsin. Certain cheeses provide a pie with more gooey meltiness, which is why mozzarella and provolone are often coupled together per Websterant store. Another option used in restaurants is Gruyere, and though it's a hard cheese, it contains a great melting ability. Varieties like Parmesan and cheddar do not endure heat well and have a lower amount of elasticity. You must know that pineapple on a pizza is something oh, like devil for Italian pizzaiolo. Soggy toppings on a pizza can be one reason to skip the homemade attempt altogether and walk down to your nearest pizza parlor for a better pie. The problem? When prepping pizza toppings at home, it's easy to forget that vegetables hold in moisture and will release water while your pizza is baking. This can cause potential crispiness in your crust to get lost completely. According to Crust Kingdom, sautéing vegetables first so they shrink allows for their moisture to evaporate before you put them on your pizza. It's essential to cook root vegetables like carrots and onions first before putting them on your pizza, as their natural sweetness comes through as they are heated. Draining your vegetables and patting them dry is also helpful. 
NA Pizza tells us using ingredients with more of an oily consistency can help avoid this issue as well. Because pizzerias are able to use higher oven temperatures, their toppings cook efficiently rather than too slowly, which allows for moisture release. Pizzeria owners shared via PMQ Pizza magazine that some restaurants pre-cook toppings like sausage for food safety. Heavy toppings may also create a wet layer between them and the dough, causing bare, no-sauce patches, and that isn't what you'd want either. If it's all in the dough, a pizza crust must start with great flour. How do so many expert pizza chefs achieve that delicate, perfectly balanced dough to create a heavenly crust? Well, it takes a bit more elbow grease than simply purchasing your favorite dough at the grocery store. Bleached flour doesn't compare with flour sourced from a mill, according to Food Republic. Sean McLean, chef and managing partner at 550 Pizza Bar, for example, said he uses only fresh milled flour for his dough. Other pizza experts, such as Kraftworks Restaurants and Breweries senior director Mike Tom, whose company operates the old Chicago pizza and taproom chain, agree that having a quality flour is key. According to Food Insight, flour containing less protein will carry less gluten, whereas more protein means added gluten. Too much gluten will turn pizza dough into a dense ball of not-so-goodness. Tom said the chain uses a lower protein flour for thin crust pizzas, while a higher protein flour is used for Chicago-style deep dish pizzas and pizza-adjacent foods like calzones. Will Bingham, owner of the Pizza Peel and Tap Room, said he combines high-gluten white flour with wheat flour to add volume to his dough, per PMQ Pizza magazine. Unless you're a chemist, achieving this balance at home takes great patience. It's safe to assume that higher quality water will make for better dough. According to Fortune's Kitchen, some pizza chefs believe using filtered water will improve the texture of pizza crust. Although not every chef agrees, many say that it's at least one step above using a potentially disastrous unfiltered alternative. The acidity, purity, and hardness of water are all components that affect dough, according to Pizza University. The water's pH level, which determines how acidic it is, can either work for or against a pizza crust's elasticity and overall weight. In addition, water high in chlorine content runs the risk of affecting the cultures in pizza dough. As a remedy for that, some pizzerias will leave water to sit out uncovered overnight so that the chlorine slowly releases itself. The amount of mineral content in the water must also be enough to help the yeast as part of its fermentation process. Pizza University explains. Some pizzerias opt to use bottled water in their pizza dough, which can get pretty expensive. According to top pizza chefs via Fortune's Kitchen, another key to keep your dough from falling flat is to season it with salt. If you're wondering why it's so difficult making that perfect pizza dough at home, maybe this is why. If you're used to buying pizza dough, you may not realize what goes into a homemade batch. We want to let you in on a little secret about how some restaurants approach their dough, giving them the final crusty texture, and it lies in the proofing. Executive chef Matteo Chavone of Pomo Pizzeria Napolitana swears by double fermentation, which is letting the dough rise twice, according to PMQ Pizza magazine. First, he lets his dough rise for four hours, then folds it into a ball and lets it rise for another eight to 12 hours. He adds that dough raised with too little time results in a heavier pizza. He cautions chefs to be aware that warmer temperatures increase the dough's ability to rise faster, so he cools in batches for the first proofing and stores it at about 70 degrees during that second period. Period. The goal of a great pizzeria is not to create bread dough, but rather a light and airy crust. But overneeding leads to more bready dough, as reported by Cucina Dolce. Cold temperatures make pizza dough more compact and tight, resulting in the gluten holding together more and complicating the kneading process. Cooking cold dough is helpful if you prefer a denser crust, though a restaurant succeeding in the pizza department will have its dough double-proofed and unfrozen. Cucina Dolce recommends kneading for no more than six minutes. Hand tossing and properly stretching pizza dough should probably be left to the experts, and that's because it takes practice. The importance of stretching dough, as opposed to, say, rolling it, lies in the final product you'll be left with. Top-notch pizzerias in New York City often structure their dough around texture, so that components like air bubbles yield just the right balance. Another trick, the art of hand-tossing dough, contributes to a traditionally thinner crust, according to Fortune's Kitchen. It can also be easier for pizza makers to work with dough by hand. Take New York City, for example, where there are endless pizza options and types of crust to cater to every preference. By pushing air out of the dough when stretching it, you can create a thinner New York City crust. Restaurant 5.0 retains air in its dough with a pulling technique that results in a chewable texture rather than a denser product. 
The choice of seasonings can truly make or break a pizza sauce. Ever experience the sensation of an acidic tomato sauce or worse, a flavorless one altogether? Whether you're attempting to do too much or aren't sure what goes in a pizza sauce, know that pizzerias typically keep things simple for results that are golden. The goal of a good sauce is to highlight the pizza's flavors rather than upstage them, kindly complementing already existing notes in the tomatoes. Practicing restraint helps a sauce have just the right amount of seasoning, especially when salty, flavor-packed toppings are involved. Fresh-grown basil, oregano, and garlic are flavors frequently used in pizzerias to do just that. Websterant Store also recommends garlic salt, onion powder, Italian seasoning, and just a little sugar to create a great sauce. Another reason pizza from around the corner tastes better than what you make at home is that sauce is prioritized at successful pizzerias. Here, there you go. Thank this, you. This pizza is unbelievable. Thank you. What is in that sauce? Oh, I'm sorry, that's top secret. According to Fortune's Kitchen, a solid pizzeria sauce is homemade and should not run short of fresh-grown tomatoes complemented with fresh basil, oregano, and garlic. Whereas you might be inclined to cook a red sauce to a point of no return, many pizzerias realize this isn't the way to go. First, cooking at a lower temperature helps the taste of sauce by not obliterating it with too much heat. When temperatures run on the lower side, notes of freshness are more detectable, while the flavor of cooked tomatoes can overwhelm your taste buds if a sauce is cooked on high heat for too long. Pizza sauce is most commonly prepared with uncooked pureed tomatoes, according to Webstaurant Store. It's all about preserving the natural compounds that give tomatoes both sweet and slightly acidic flavors. If overcooked, the sugars found in tomatoes will caramelize and offer that overcooked, unpleasant flavor. Should a sauce be overcooked, it'll brown in color and lose its vibrant red hue. Now that you know the basics, you can better understand why your homemade pizza doesn't taste as good as the ones you can find at a restaurant.